Hello, hello. Blartanian here with Wither Feelings, the Garnet Intersecting Will Lufania Plus. We're bringing a team of Barts, Exteth, and Beatrix because I really wanted to take Exteth into this stage. The surprise of no one. Beatrix, of course, is a complete house in this stage and is kind of the driving force behind our victory here. And Barts is here because he's great. Uh, Ishtola usually pairs a bit better with Exteth because of the whole, you know, bravey enough thing. I thought I'd try Barts here because I figured his splash damage would mean he'd be contributing more damage when he's not using his burst phase uh, compared to Ishtola. That was the thought process there. Um, I actually want to spend this fight uh, talking about something, uh, a topic that isn't really discussed too often in terms of gameplay. Uh, phases, and thinking about phases is managing fights in terms of phases. Because uh, sometimes I, you know, I see folks kind of asking about how to uh, uh, how to do a fight, and they'll say, "Oh, my team ran out of steam at a certain point." And I suspect in a lot of cases it's because they they had the tools, but they applied them improperly because they didn't view the fight through the right lens, the lens of phases. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, we have all these different resources. We have the calls, we have first phases, summon, skill, you know, LD skill uses. And knowing when to apply them and when to use them is a critical part of you know, getting through the fight. So you'll see here, I started this fight, well obviously I started with the LD, Beatrix's LD and Xdeath's LD to get their debuffs up and to dispel and all that jazz. I also used the Kurosame base call. Um, I'm actually going to let that fall, the Kurosame debuff fall off once it's, uh, once, it, you know, it's, once it's expired. But my thought process here was, we're trying to race this orb, so to speak. You know, Beatrice is kind of stalling it, but can't manage it fully on her own. So we're just trying to basically race this orb and get them down to below 80%. Uh, we also are using the summon for the same effect. Um, and these are both things I planned out. I was like, okay, I'm going to open the fight with first Ame, and I'm going to use the summon once all five stacks, and all three of them have five stacks. Uh, as luck would have, the break order worked out such that I was able to get them all to five stacks here. Uh, it's not always easy in this particular fight. But that was able. That let us maximize our damage and get them past the 80% threshold that we needed to get them past. We still haven't used our burst effects. We still haven't called in a friend unit, anything, anything like that. That's for later. We have our Gabronth call as well on them. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to be attacking and hitting them and stuff. My next thing is to uh, planning to, around is their uh, the 69% threshold. That's kind of the next phase of the fight in my mind. You know, technically the 80 to 60, 80 to 70 is a phase, but I'm not really using any. This is kind of a a breather for me, basically. I'm, I kind of knew, like, okay, we're gonna ride these debuffs that we had applied during the first kind of st stage of the fight. We're gonna see how far we can get with those. We're gonna get them, go down to 69%. Uh, I wanted to time it so Beatrix had her safeguard up, just on the off chance. In previous runs, I found that uh, if these guys got their you know, multiple sandstorms, they could actually get their brave to a point where the sap won't get them, get you know, won't get rid of all of it. And if their turn was coming up, it could get off. And so I just wanted to get through that with the safeguard up, just on the off chance that uh, something went screwy with the, the way the counters and everything happened. Uh, x Death actually is pretty effective in this fight. His damage definitely is suffering, I'm finding. Um, I'm spamming his skill 1, actually, because it's doing more damage than, than his skill 2, which is kind of weird, but, you know, 3 targets and splash damage. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, a character who, even with his even with his rework, is kind of feeling a little dated in certain ways. I'm still loving him. I'm going to try to make him work as hard as I can, but uh, that's kind of my appraisal of him at the moment. Just the damage is kind of lacking, which is upsetting, but it's not the only thing that brings to the table, which is why we're able to bring him here, as you'll be seeing. So now with Bart's, now that those debuffs have disappeared, I'm using his burst. I was, er, uh, the burst finisher. I wanted to save it for that, um, figuring we'd be able to kind of ride the effects of those debuffs and then use this to get to the next stage. We're using the base call just to get some attack boosts. We use the AA, all that, refresh the LD. Um... With Beatrix, we don't want to use her uh, shock skill until, ideally, until the next. Uh, I think we we're, we're able to refresh it once before the 39% mark, but we want to save them to dispel any buffs they accrue during that, just because that defense buff is annoying. I also tagged in the Bart's friend here because uh, most um, 
for a few reasons, a few things, kind of ideas I had there. One was just um, because he'd be around for a shorter amount of time than my Bart's, I just wanted to kind of get him in and out before the fight got really hectic toward the end, before racing the orb, because I didn't want my, my Bart's coming back while the orb was being raced without his burst at full stacks. I also didn't want to bring this guy and have to have him ramp up late in the fight, so I figured the midway point is the time to do it. I was going to save the burst effect for once we were no longer relying as much on the debuffs to carry our damage. So that was uh, the dis that was kind of why I chose to do the burst there, and that that's kind of an important thing to do. Is sometimes you know I think this game some can sometimes train you to front load all or not front load necessarily, but front load or back load all of your big guns at a specific moment, you know? I think a lot of low turn runs make that appear... It kind of is the optimal strategy if you can pull it off, honestly. It ends the fight the quickest, and that's kind of the dream, right? But if you're doing a more kind of balanced approach, a defensive team, something like that, or you're just struggling, maybe consider that, uh, you know, if Kurosame, if with Kurosame and Gabranth calls, you're already hitting max HP damage, you probably don't need to use your Bart's effect. Your Bart's burst until those things are done. That was my thinking here. I was already doing perfectly good damage with just the debuffs. And now without the debuffs, we can tag in the burst and kind of carry that. And again, this is more for, you know, something like this. Uh, uh, like I said, a more kind of balanced team that uh, isn't going to be blasting through the fight like crazy. If you're using like a triple green team or some crazy, I don't know, COD-based, COD, like, you know, Cloud of Darkness abuse team, I don't know, uh, results may vary. Uh, my suspicion is that if this advice is helpful for you, you're probably someone who isn't used to playing too aggressively, and you, you know, this is probably a helpful resource management guidance that uh, you might find useful. Okay, getting a quick break there. I was nervous about how high all their braves were. Well, I'm thinking of saving that uh, that X death EX for the 39% threshold. I'm trying to time things just right here, because again, I'm nervous about, um, I'm nervous about, like, pushing them below 39% in such a way that the subsequent sandstorms push their brave too high for me to shave, which is a weird thing to say with X-Death on the team, but it can happen. It, it did happen in an earlier run. Here we go, we have, uh, there we go, we have the set the X applied, and so we are ready to just go ahead and take these sandstorms to the face. I'm pausing real quick just to check the That being said, uh, the actual HP requirement isn't the problem for me because, as you can see, I took off all my HP passives for this fight. Anywho, um, we are now using the Beatrix LD I mentioned. It had fallen off, so our damage definitely suffered. It, getting them over that 40% uh, that mark actually took a bit of effort. We're ready now to apply the Kurosame and Kronk calls again. Uh, could have probably done this a bit, done it a bit earlier. Um, I was kind of hoping that if I timed it right, they'd end up at five stacks at the right moment, but I don't think it quite ends up shaking out the way I planned. That's a, another fun thing about the Kurosame and Gabranth debuffs. The reason why they're so good, in addition, well, one of the reasons they're so good is because they can last really long if you need them to. In addition to just, you know, you can just drop them and they're good for, you know, they're as good as you need them to be. I don't know if that makes sense, a little bit rambly, but anyway. Uh, also noting, this uh, video is actually on three times speed because, uh, as you can probably guess, between the poison ticks and the counterattacks and the three enemies and their goddamn phase change animations and all that shit, this took a goddamn age. So I was going to, I was trying to queue up a burst phase here, but I just, I realized that, once again, if I did that, uh, there was a greater than zero chance that I'd end up in an awkward position regarding their uh, their brave mounts. So I was like, you know what, let's we'll stall for a turn. With Beatrix, apply Holy Knight Safeguard, just make sure we're absolutely totally safe. And now we can go ahead and burst just fine. We're using the Ash Call there, so that we can spam Almagist in the burst and boost it up. Uh, as far as phase stuff goes, you know, now we used the reapplying the debuffs and um, using Bart's burst effect, kind of. Those were our bridges to get to the 39% mark. Then we uh, tried to force our way close to 20 percent so that we could bring in the X-Death Burst to finish the fight, because now um, we're not going to be able to, like, you know, use the burst effect the same way that you can with, like, a, you know, a turn hog or something like that. 
but it's still gonna be dealing basically tr a bunch of true damage. Look at that, that's a bunch of true damage just kind of for free every tick, every turn. And the reason I saved it for halfway through the burst effect, or halfway through, halfway through, like this late in the fight, was I wanted, to, I, I knew I was gonna need to use it to race the orb. And so I wanted to let the orb tick down about halfway, and then bring it in so that while he's enchanted by Ash Call, he could buff the orb back up, and then you use the burst effect to actually race the orb the rest of the way, you'll see. Because, um, you know, once again, like, Beatrix is the only native uh, lightning damage on the team, so we are we have this Ash Call, but Bart's also mostly does single target damage. All of his AoE is actually wind and, wind, like wind and element on its own, so... I guess you could just say, this is the part we'd probably say, hey, Blart, you could have just used your trawler like you were talking about, but... I wanted to use Bart. It's a Final Fantasy V thing, guys. But, here we go. Still two turns left in the burst effect. We are doing just fine as far as ticking down these guys. Um, should be just fine. There we go. Hopefully this, uh, this whole kind of way of breaking down a fight made sense to you and uh, was helpful to hear about. You know, maybe maybe you heard it and were like, dude, I already know this, I didn't need to hear this, but hey, you know, this was an excess run. This was more for me than for you to begin with. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, no artifacts at all? Dude, change it. Update that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Adios.